Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are. Welcome to another, another episode of Coffee at the Crossroads. I hope your Wednesday is going well. I hope everything is good. I hope you woke up easy, well rested, talking to yourself nice, not pressuring yourself to get up and be productive, unless you're running a little behind and then that's a different story. Anyway, I'm here. Happy Wednesday. So before we jump into today's episode, I would like to address some things first and foremost, okay? Recently, when it came to my announcement of coming back with my brief episode, some people were a little disappointed at how short the episode was. Listen, I'm going to let you know this right now, okay? The way I am doing my podcast of going on, moving forward, is like this. There are going to be some long episodes. There might be some moderate episodes. Some of the episodes that might be put up here might just be in the moment and just coming from a place of divine inspired word, inspired word, inspirational talk, okay? Where I'm in the moment and we're just flowing creative freedom here so as long as y'all okay with that and y'all willing to move and flow with me and be easy about everything honey i'll be easy with you okay but do understand we are going to talk about some real stuff here we really are some things we might circle back around because we might just need to dive in a little deeper. That way y'all could be able to get a better understanding of where I'm coming from. Other times, it'll be something completely fresh and new, something newly discovered or rediscovered in some of y'all's cases. Be either way, let's get on into it as I take a sip of my morning coffee. Mmm. Now, I am kind of recording this a little bit later in the day while I am. So if you hear any background noise of cars, construction, anything like that, my loves, I'm sorry. All right. There's a lot of construction going on in my area. They're over here trying to expand the highways. And let me tell you, I've been living in the same city for over 15 years and they're still working on these highways. Me and the population, we getting a little tired now here, okay? Anyway, getting into this. Today's topic, in all honesty, the importance of shaping a relationship with your ancestors first versus jumping into hoodoo practice and just wanting to do spiritual work and work roots and conjure right off the bat. Shaping a relationship and your understanding with yourself, all right? And the thing is, what people do not understand is that a lot of people are very fascinated, highly fascinated when it comes to what you're able to do in hoodoo practice, as in via working roots, able to bless, generate prosperity, able to throw and work roots on someone, to attract this, to hex that, to curse this. Everyone is fascinated with, you could say, the power of the practice now. But what they fail to realize is that there's a whole culture behind it. There's reasons behind we do those things. There's a spirituality, an understanding. Okay. Now, though hoodoo practice, sometimes called root work, working roots, kaanja. Yes, those names are used interchangeably to describe a practice. Within the practice, those are different you could say specialities, but we're not going to get into specialities, okay? That's a later episode. Understand this. Root work is the understanding of the root of all things, okay? So, by 
That being said, what is the root? That be your ancestors? Yes, that is your ancestors because ancestors is the backbone and is the central pillar and foundation in hoodoo practice, yes. But take it deeper, what is the root of all things? That be creator. sometimes called God, the God of your understanding. And when I say the God of your understanding, no, I'm not talking about the Christian God. If you get down with the Christian God, baby, that's you. That's your relationship. It is your relationship and understanding that you have with creator that allows you to be able to move mountains. What and who or whatever you put your faith in and worship that, that essence that lives in all things and resides in all things because remember in Hoodoo practice everything has a spirit everything has a creator essence and force and source within it because we're all our products of creation and all are connected to creator So root work is the understanding of the root of all things. So as long as you understand that creator, that creator essence is the root, everything will start to fall into place. Your ancestors are here to help you, help you grow, help you learn, to help you understand so you can access that root easier that way it's not just you doing it alone remember hoodoo is a community both physically and spiritually hoodoo is a community so when you're doing your work and you're doing your veneration honey do you honestly think that you're praying by yourself do you honestly think that you're doing things by yourself do you honestly think that you're tapping into the root of all things by yourself Baby, no. It's understanding the fundamental relationship and bond that you naturally walk with, live with, breathe with, move with, that connects you to every single thing known in creation. You are no different than stars. You are no different than a tree. You're no different than an animal both in a physical and also in a spiritual sense. You have to keep an open mind with this one because I know some of y'all with me saying you're no different than an animal, people are going to be like, well, we're humans and we have, you know, more developed uh, frontal cortex that allows us to be an ass. Scratch all that, baby. We're talking about fundamental principle when it comes to understanding the relationship with other spirits. I was about to say things, but spirits, because everything has spirit now. So to be able to understand that relationship, you have to be able to understand the relationship with yourself. Many people not only come to me, but also go to other practitioners as well, wanting to know their ancestors, who walks with them and everything else, thinking that by simply knowing That right there quantifies a relationship. Don't get me wrong. Yes, names do have power. Names are shortened spells. But, my loves, by simply knowing a name. Ooh, see, told you. That was a big construction truck driving by. (laughs) By simply knowing a name does not mean that you have a working relationship with that said ancestor. It takes time to build this relationship. Most people, sadly, have an instant gratification mindset when it comes to shaping a relationship with the ancestors, a deep one, a mutual one. It takes work, it takes time, it takes dedication. And it also takes a good amount of faith too, not gonna lie. Because you're gonna be sitting there 
If you wish to do every single day and do a little something every single day to venerate your ancestors, be it sitting in front of an altar and praying, either going out in nature and connecting that way, either sitting with yourself and using your body, knowing that your body is a temple and an altar of the ancestors, whatever you may do, tending to your family or your community as a means of ancestral veneration, be that cooking food, taking care of your own, taking care of the community and others, however that may be. It takes time. Most people, it takes about a couple of years. Now that does depend on innate spiritual inclination because there are people who are naturally gifted out there, who naturally hear, see, perceive, smell, taste, touch, feel. And for those who have a natural innate ability, it could take a shorter time. But for those who have to sit down and actually cultivate, because everyone has spiritual gifts, some people have to work at it to get them, I'm not going to say woken up because the gifts are awake, but to get your conscious mind open to the understanding working consciously with your gifts that take time that do take time but it's a practice you won't see manifestations right away and if you do consider yourself lucky but you cannot get allow yourself to get downtrodden with the understanding of oh you've been venerating for about six eight months and you're not really seeing anything baby takes time so with that said how do you listen how do you learn to listen to your ancestors that way when you find out who they are you did not just open up a door and do not have the base understanding to be able to listen and perceive them what you opened up a door just to have folks that actually do love you and actually do care about you for them to be upset because the mess you can't seem to perceive the message mm. so how do you listen number one is trust yourself you really must learn to develop a deep trust with yourself you have to it can be scary sometimes, but you have to develop a deep trust with yourself first. Granted, do keep in mind, this is all outside of studying your family history and those who came before and gathering those stories, if you have the ability to. Because that is also essential. Two. I'm not going to say quiet your mind, because... If you think about it, there's no such thing as a quiet mind. It's either a present mind or a mind that is flustered. Learn to be present. Thoughts are going to come no matter what you do, even while meditating. It's not about clearing your mind. It's about how well can you keep your mind and yourself in the present moment focused on the task at hand. How do you focus? Through your breathing and your breath. One of the easiest ways to practice listening, especially if you have natural clear audience, is listen to music. Put on something instrumental. Play with the sound. With your ear, not physically. Play with the sound with your ear. Listen to the faintest background noise. And let everything else go away. Then allow the full, the fullness of the music to come back and play with different parts of it, listening deep to different parts of the song, of the music. Some people's ancestors are not as talkative. They're more about action. Therefore, you listening is going to have to be about paying attention to the physical signs, as in, how are people interacting with you? How is your environment interacting with you versus you interacting with it? How's nature moving around you? How's the animals behaving? 
Some people's folks are very visual, love to send dreams. Learning how to be able to decode those dreams is going to be essential. And before you take dreams literally, always break it down metaphorically. Unless you know good and well in your bones that what was said and shown in that dream, they said what they said. Now, do understand, I'm just throwing examples out there to give you a better understanding of what you could be able to work on to better be able to listen and shape the relationship. But at the end of the day, to better shape the relationship with your ancestors and also with yourself is through veneration. It's going to be through prayer. It's going to be through taking a t- moment in time and giving offerings, pouring libation. Don't be afraid to open up your mouth and talk to them. Because yes, they know and see what's going on in your head and heart. Honey, your ancestors even know what you do behind closed doors in the dark, what people don't want what you don't want people to know. They know your secrets. They've been around the block. You got it from somewhere, just saying. Just saying, trust me, just saying. Takes time. Sit with your folks, open up your mouth, actually talk to them. Do not approach them out of fear because if you truly do believe and truly do know that your ancestors, your elevated ancestors are there and they truly do love you and have your best interest at heart. Knowing how to pray them forward is essential. Then honey, there's no reason to fear when it comes to venerating your loving ancestors and your loving spirits. There's no reason to fear. right now how do you pray your ancestors forward there's various ways but as long as you know that you when you pray them forward you're stating the parameters of your good your blessed your anointed loving ancestors elevated ancestors that love you that wish to see you thrive and succeed in life and live up to your highest good and potential that operate in accordance to the good and the will of creator, then honey, you got the right ones forward. You might not know them by name, but honey, you stated the parameters of the good ones to come forward that truly have your back in life. But again, I keep reiterating this takes time. Relationships, even with your loved ones that are still alive, takes time. No good lasting long marriage or relationship happens overnight now. So do not expect forging and building a deeper relationship with your ancestors and yourself spiritually be something that happens overnight. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Sorry for all the little extra noises and everything. Like I said, I did this a little too late, close to the afternoon and all that stuff. And not only that, Spotify for podcasters changed up a little bit of how they do their editing. So I have a little bit of figuring to do. But I kept my word. Here is the new episode. I hope y'all enjoy Let me know what you think in the comments below. And trust me, I'll figure out the whole editing thing a little bit better. But hey, I kept my word to y'all. Y'all have a blessed day and much love.